All right, well, today we're going to talk about um, parallelograms, and uh, we're going to start some definitions. Um, quadrilateral is a closed figure formed by four segments intersecting at their endpoints. So kind of some of the, I guess, standard or traditional things would be something like a square or a rectangle. And things like a parallelogram. Uh, but then we also got some things that maybe would look a little different that you wouldn't consider a typical quadrilateral. But it would still have four sides. Now, a special kind of quadrilateral is a parallelogram which, um, in which opposite sides are parallel. So you would have something like this. And you'd say this side is parallel to this side. And these two are opposite and parallel. Okay, now a diagonal is a segment joining opposite vertices in a polygon. So that would be something like if I draw my parallelogram, then this would be considered a diagonal. Okay. So now we're gonna look at an example of a parallelogram. Um, parallelogram has four vertices and that would be point M, N, O, and P. All right, and if I'm going to name this parallelogram, usually what happens is we draw a parallelogram and we go around the sides of the shape and typically we go in order, so in alphabetical order, so M, N, P, Q, that should be a Q. All right, the opposite sides of M, P, Q are going to be segment M, N, and segment Q, P. That would be one pair of sides. The other pair would be MQ and NP opposite angles those are the ones that are across from each other so that would be angle M and angle P angle N angle Q so that's just some notation there consecutive angles those are the ones that are next to each other so if I'm going consecutive, I'd say angle M, angle N, angle P, then angle Q. Okay, you can go whichever direction you want to go to. You can go this way, around the shape, or you can go around this way. It doesn't matter as long as you go continuously all the way around. All right now the diagonals that's going to be segment MP and then you would have another one going on the opposite side that would be segment NQ. Right, um, now we're going to talk about some properties that make a parallelogram a parallelogram. Um, these might even be called conditions. But if it's a parallelogram, it's going to have these five things. These five things are going to be true. Or if these things are true, then you can say it's a parallelogram. Okay, so opposite sides are parallel. So that means this side is parallel to this side. This one up here is parallel to this one up here. Or down at the bottom. Okay, also opposite sides are congruent. So that means this side has the same length as this side. And this side on top and bottom, both of those are also congruent. Okay, consecutive angles are supplementary. So let's say I went ahead and named this. Let's go A, B, C, D. Okay, um, opposite angles are congruent. That would mean that angle A, this outside angle here, would be congruent to this angle here. And angle 
ABC would be congruent to angle ADC. Okay. Opposite would be congruent. And then consecutive angles are supplementary. So an example would be like, say, angle, I don't know, ABC plus angle BCD. They're going to have to equal 180 degrees. Any two. So these two would add up to 180. These two would add up to 180. These two would add up to 180. And then these two down here would add up to 180. Okay. The last property diagonals bisect each other. That would mean that this side here is congruent to this side here. So this would be kind of a midpoint. And then you would have this side here would be congruent to that side there. Okay, so if it's a parallelogram, again, just want to repeat this, all five of these are, are true. All right, so let's look at some examples. All right, if we name the parallelogram, uh, let's just call this parallelogram. Again, we can start anywhere, but we just got to go um, all the way around in the same direction. So let's go C, D, A, B. Right. Okay, and then because it is a parallelogram, I would know that AB has to be parallel to CD. DA would have to be congruent to CB. All right, angle CDA, which is this angle right here, would have to be congruent to this opposite angle down here. So we would call that angle ABC. Right, and then DE, well, DE comes down right here. DE is going to be congruent to BE since the diagonals bisect each other. All right, now we're going to put this kind of into some equations here. Um, if I have a parallelogram ABCD, I know the measure of angle A is X and D is 2X minus 3. We want to find the value of X. So this is where it's going to be very important to draw the parallelograms and label them. Um, you can put A anywhere you want. I'm going to start here. A, B, C, D. All right, so if A is X and D is 2X minus 3, okay, I need to come up with some kind of equation so I can solve for X. Well, if you look at the position of these two, A and D would be considered what's called consecutive. So looking at the properties, um, right here it says consecutive angles are supplementary. So I'm going to take this. These two have to add up to 180. So that would be x plus 2x minus 3 equals 180. That would give me 3x minus 3 is 180. If I add 3 to both sides, it's going to be 183. Divide by 3 is going to give me 61. And since we were just solving for x, that means we're done. Alright, next example. Um, parallelogram XYZ, W is a parallelogram with diagonals XZ and YW that intersect at point A. So again, draw it out so you can see what is where x, y, z, w. Going to have di diagonals x, z, and y, w. And this point right here, that intersection point, is point A. I know x, a is 3m.
and ZA is 5M minus 4. And we want to solve for M. Well, again, depending on how this is laid out, I notice that the 3M and the 5M minus 4 are along this diagonal. And so this is the midpoint, so that would mean for my equation, 3M has to equal 5M minus 4 based off the properties. And if I subtract 5M from both sides, that gives me a negative 2M is equal to negative 4, which means M is going to be equal to 2. Next set of examples. I have a parallelogram, and then I have this kind of thing that goes outside. That's an exterior angle. Right. Um, opposite angles are congruent, so I know x is going to be 80 degrees. Okay. These two have to be supplementary, so I know that 80 plus z has to equal 180. So if I subtract 80 from both sides, I know that z is 100. Right, and if z is 100, this angle right here is 100. Okay, this has to be a linear pair. So y plus 100 has to be 180. If I subtract 100, that tells me that y is 80. So that's 80 degrees there. Next example, again it's a parallelogram, so 120 is up here, opposite of that is Z, so Z is 120 degrees. All right. And then we know, um, because it is a parallelogram, remember that um, the opposite sides are parallel, Okay, which means that alternate interior angles, this is going to act like a transversal. So that means alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So I know that x has to be equal to this angle up here. So um, this is x, this is x. And that makes this triangle. So I know that x plus 35 plus 120 has to equal 180. Um, x plus 155. Subtract 155 from both sides. That gives you that x is 25. Right, and then 30, 35 and y would have to be congruent. So this would also be 35 degrees. All right, I'm moving on to number 7. Kind of that same idea with the alternate interior angles. I know x is 30 degrees. Right here I have a linear pair. So I know z plus 70 has to be 180. So subtract. That's going to tell me that z is 110. All right, z is 110. Um, and then because, again, I have alternate interior angles right here, I know that 30 plus 110 plus y is going to be 180. Since if this is y, then this has to be y here. So that's going to give me 140 plus y equals 180. So if I subtract 140, 180 minus 140, that tells me that this angle down here is 140, or excuse me, 40 degrees. All right, and then this is the last example and I'm going to leave for you to try on your own. This will be one that I can check with you to make sure that you understood the notes and help you with the practice if we need to.